hard, to be quite honest with you. This is our release. Uh, how this relates to two years ago was August 6th, uh, where we announced our effort against three judges. Now today being August 11th, we think we have enough time to get the job done. I think last time we were somewhat underestimated. We knew it was a challenge. Never before in history had this been done. And so I think many thought it was um, something noteworthy for the media, but likely not going to happen. And when the results rolled in, not only did they roll in in favor of this movement and voting out three justices, but you could see county by county, individual processes and thought at work. These voters had taken time to evaluate, and they were voting with their hearts and with their minds. Do you think the other side will be better funded, better organized, and I think Justice Wiggins has indicated he'll be more vocal? Well, I think he's already started, to be honest with you, and I know that they've been on college campuses uh, doing what we would say is maybe touted as an educational forum, more of a dog and pony, more of a dog and pony pony show, if you will, <laughs> because it's very one-sided. They're doing a PR tour basically on taxpayers' expenses, so there's no doubt they've started this. I think Iowa's don't need the justices to be on a PR tour, as Tamara said. They just need to stay them with, inside the parameters of the Constitution. If they do that, they're going to be okay. And that's why you see the other three that are up for retention. The review of the bar there, they're well into the 90 percentile. We're not going after those three. We will know this campaign is successful, this effort is successful, if we just vote out Wiggins and nobody else. Do you think the voters are going to be able to make that separation and will go in and vote him no, and, but vote yes on the other three? I really believe they will. And we saw that two years ago. Everybody was concerned about the, the carnage that'd be up and down the ballot with the judiciary. Uh, and Iowans are intellectual, they're savvy, they know what they're doing, they voted out three. I think Iowans this time will vote out Wiggins only. Do you think they'll be better funded and better organized? You know, I thought they were going to be, but then I saw the peer review of Wiggins, so I don't know. Maybe Wiggins doesn't inspire them to do that. Um, but I, I guarantee you, they, we are, this will be a tougher campaign. The basketball analogy that Greg should have alluded to is that after you win a state championship, it's awfully hard to go back and win the same state championship. So we know this effort's going to be a little bit more difficult. Were you also saying that, again, you would call on the others who aren't on the ballot to, to step aside? Like you know, I really believe that's the honorable thing to do, uh, and that's the integrity thing to do. And so, especially if we vote out Wiggins, I think now the message is clear that the other three should step down. But you don't expect they will, given what they, well, uh, their response to last you know, we, we have seen a threat of judicial arrogance here. I mean, from Justice Strait calling us American idiots and rednecks because we voted him off. Uh, from Justice Katie saying, you know, basically the people of Iowa just don't understand, so we need to do this PR tour to get them to understand. You know, the people of Iowa do understand. You don't make law from the bench. If you do, we're going to hold you accountable. That is absolutely Thank you, guys. Well, I just wanted to ask yeah. about uh, this morning's announcement. Which announcement was that? Uh, well, you were preparing for this thing. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the Ryan. And, and uh, I know I talked to you a year ago about well, I think one is, you'll see that uh, the conservatives, you talked to a lot of the people who are gathered here today, my guess is they're going to say they're very inspired to make Obama a one-term president. I think the announcement of Ryan today was a solid choice. Uh, he's been with us on the pro-life issues, he's been, he's been with us on the pro-marriage issues. He's willing to make some bold stances in regards to entitlement reform and those type of things. Uh, to reform government. So I think it was a solid choice. Now, I would have advocated for Huckabee or Santorum, uh, but Paul Ryan, I think, is a solid choice, which I think will activate this group. Now, you'd have to ask a lot of the individuals here, but my guess is they're now just getting used to the idea. But when I heard Ryan's speech today, referenced even by Perry a little bit earlier, the law of nature, the law of nature's God, our rights come from God, not from government. Those are the things that are going to inspire this crowd. And he's ready to be president. Is this an election in your mind? Well, I think that's part of the Romney-Ryan challenge now. They need to turn that tide. There's no doubt they're there to vote against Obama. Now they need to turn that tide. Uh, 
we had invited Governor Romney here, as well as Obama. <laughs> we had invited Governor Romney here, and he couldn't make it. Now we probably know why. But uh, I think the best thing he could do is show up, talk about his marriage, talk about raising five kids, talk about all the grandkids, and now he'll be America's chief champion for it all, the it all works. That would start turning the tide. You're not the media, so anybody else? Just tell me a little bit about this uh, summit and some of the speakers that you guys have going on here today. It's a very balanced summit, and I was just thrilled the way this came together, because obviously you have King and Grassley, who are state officials, elected office holders, and then of course Governor Perry, Huckabee, and Santorum with the national <laughs> influence, and then people like Rosenberg and Dr. White, who are going to give you more of a world view, which these people you know, as you saw, they want to hear the world view stuff. Uh, but the whole deal is that you cannot delegate leadership. I mean, every individual, all of us here, we need to lead. Uh, all of us in our marriages, our parenting, our jobs, whatever it is, we need to lead and lead with the table. And so hopefully they, they do embrace the high call of leadership moving forward. All right, thanks, guys.